Hello colleagues and welcome to the next episode of DINCAST where today we're going to be looking at the whole sustainability agenda but not through the lens of the built environment but through IT and what it means to green your IT which is going to be a very very big issue and I'm delighted to be joined today by Tom Greenwood uh, the founder and managing director of Whole Grain Digital um, who's going to enlighten us about the size and the scale of IT as uh, a contributor to um, carbon uh, pollution. And uh, Tom, great to have you here today. Um, do you want to just sort of tell our viewers a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. So um, I run a web design agency called Whole Grain Digital, which um, is a sort of values led agency where we work with purpose led businesses and nonprofits and, and some public sector. But a key kind of part of our business is our focus on sustainability. So um, right since day one, we've we've always looked at sort of how can we be a sustainable business in, in our operations um, and the types of organizations that we work with. And then over the last three years, we've sort of gone on a journey to focus on the actual products and services that we deliver in terms of um, websites and um, web applications and what is the what is the energy and carbon impact of those products and how can we reduce it? So for somebody who sort of works in this particular field, because you sort of just sort of paint the picture for us as to IT's place in, in terms of sort of climate change and, as I say, emissions and things like that, because I'm, I'm not sure I fully understand that at this stage. Yeah, absolutely. So most people don't really think about um, carbon emissions when talking about sort of IT services and the internet, but... Um, when you total it all up, it's sort of estimated to be around 2% of global carbon emissions, which is, to give you context, it's roughly the same as the, as the aviation industry. So um, 2% might not sound like a lot, but it's actually, you know, it, it's a very significant sector from a carbon point of view. And one of the key things that is worth noting about it is it's also one of the fastest growing sources of emissions. So it might be 2% now, but it's going up very quickly. And the reason for that is simply that our our hunger for data is is sort of rising exponentially. And the carbon emissions basically come from electricity use. So the more data we consume and the more data we store, um, the more electricity has to be used, both in data centers, which are basically giant warehouses full of computers that each individually sort of consume roughly the same amount of electricity as a medium-sized town um, but also the actual transmission network so you know every time you're loading something or sending something it has to run through a series of um, networks which are all powered by electricity and then at the end of it you've got sort of millions of people who are sat there on their computers and their phones and smart tvs um, which are also using a lot of electricity in, in, in terms of from, a, from a, a, a practical point of view, what can sort of organizations um, sort of start to take right now about greening their IT in a, in a practical way? You've mentioned about electricity. You know, is this something about make, making sure that, you know, your electricity supplier is, you know, fully sort of sustainable, renewable sources? What, 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 what sort of practical steps could um, we be taking now? Yeah, I think um, on the sort of the office side, then obviously all of the impact of the machines you're using, whether they're just sort of the desktop computers or whether you're actually running your own servers in your office, um, then having a renewable energy supply in your own premises is a, is a great starting point. Um, I think also it's worth looking, you know, as more and more people are outsourcing their IT to sort of cloud providers, um, looking at the environmental side in the procurement process and making it a requirement to actually see a strong commitment to the use of renewable energy in those data centers um, and sort of broadly good environmental policies around like the disposable the disposal of electronic waste and so on um, and then and then sort of start chipping away at it bit by bit websites are kind of a nice place to look at actual like practical technical actions because it's something that most people can get their heads around because um, we all interact with websites and there's a lot of kind of efficiencies and you could that you can um, you can find there um, we built a website carbon calculator at websitecarbon.com that people can use to kind of get a sense of how polluting their own website is and um, 
and and you can then sort of start to see how you can bring that down so that's sort of a nice tangible thing that you can do which isn't in the hands of you know a big global tech company so so give me some examples of where a website is more polluting than it needs to be yeah so i mean a lot of it comes down to um file sizes and there's a few places where file sizes are just much bigger than they need to be and users don't necessarily see it um it's it's mainly a case of web designers and developers being being a bit lazy because they can um because the internet keeps getting faster so they can <laughs> throw in bigger files without anybody noticing um so part of it is just um really large images which are not compressed properly not sized properly part of it is the use of things like autoplay video um you know video can be a great communication tool but it can also be a very kind of energy wasteful gimmick if it's if it's not there for a good reason um and then some of it's on the actual code side where you know developers are throwing in kind of libraries of code that where they, they don't need the whole library they just need one little snippet of to do one feature but it was easy for them to just bundle in the whole thing without really separating it out so you end up with these sort of massive files that are being transferred every time somebody visits and and then you multiply that up by the number of users you know a small website for a small business might only have a few thousand a month um but that's even that can add up to quite a lot but you know big websites could have hundreds of thousands or even millions of visitors per month um and when you scale that up it it really you start to see the impact is it just is it just websites then tom are, are there other sort of media channels um that contribute to to this as well because obviously more organizations are now using multi channels to communicate with customers and things yeah absolutely and i think all the digital channels are basically having an impact and some of them you know depending on what you use the most is probably going to be where your biggest impact is and i think part of the challenge with you know if you're using twitter or linkedin or youtube for your marketing um you have very little control <laughs> over the efficiency of those systems and and their energy supplies um it's not really like you can shop around for an alternative to youtube if that's where your audience is so that's a real that's a real challenge um but i think what you can do is be very mindful about the content you're putting out so you're being very selective about putting out smaller amount very high quality content rather than just sort of firing out um a constant stream of of stuff just so that you you know <laughs> quality not quantity and and in, in in terms of if i was sort of a you know an executive sort of um you know looking at this and wanting to develop a strategic plan for it you know where would you sort of recommend um we start looking at this sort of formulating a, a, a strategy for greening our it yeah i think it, it it depends a little bit on the size of the organization but i think initially it's worth trying to do an initial audit of like what it resources you're actually using so you know the it department in most companies could probably give you an idea about you know how much um how many servers you're using in terms of cloud providers like amazon or google um you've got full control over your own website so you can quite easily do an audit of that and and scale that up by the amount of traffic you get every month um and then you could also look at things like your um your actual bandwidth of your company you know you're you're paying for internet how much are you using um you can get that from your bills so you can get a sense of that pretty easily and and then sort of do a bit of a survey of staff and see like what are they actually using it for Okay and you mentioned one important item in in there around sort of um procurement and as, as I say I just wondered how much control organizations actually do have and is this more about changing organizational behavior or is it about changing organizational practice and again the way we procure sort of goods and services from IT companies Yeah it's a bit of both I think on the um on the website side of things that's so uh, very much tends to be within the control of the individual organization so that's something where i think you can directly have a positive impact um but most of the rest of the it sort of chain whether that's um you know things you're using like microsoft 365 or whether it's cloud storage of files or whether it's um you know things for video calls like zoom for example um 
those things to some extent you know you don't have any direct control over those products you just have control over which products you choose to use so i think making sustainability part of that procurement process and asking those suppliers questions about um, their environmental policies their use of renewable energy um, is a good way of actually ha having an impact um, both in terms of you choosing the better option but also putting a bit of pressure on those organizations to feel like this is something customers are asking for and are, are there any sort of you know recommendations or kite marks around you know which organizations sort of supply these that you know viewers should be looking out for I wish there was, um, <laughs> not really. Um, from a web hosting point of view, um, there's a, a nonprofit called the Green Web Foundation who have a database of all of the hosting providers who have, um, who have provided evidence that they are using um, renewable energy supplies in their data centers. So if you go to the Green Web Foundation website, you can, you can find that database and that's a good starting point for finding um, hosting providers. But beyond that, once you move into sort of the other products of you know things like um, video conferencing tools and things, there's no there's no specific kite mark for that. Okay, well, sort of, I, I think this is going to be a very very live issue, and, I, and I'm I'm keen for sort of viewers to sort of you know at least start thinking about this. So, if there was one um, thought you wanted to leave viewers with um, about um, the whole sustainable IT agenda, um, what would that be, Tom? Um, I would say to just start talking about it. I think at the moment, one of the big issues is that it's just not on people's radars, you know, physical products, people, I think generally they have, um, you know, it's, it's in people's minds that there's a, a real impact of the transportation and the manufacturing and the use of the product once it's in their customer's hand and so on. Um, and the same with buildings, you know, we understand that you've got to build them and then they consume energy, but Digital products, nobody really talks about it, so it's not in people's minds. So I think my advice would be start talking about it, and from that, solutions will emerge. Well, um, hopefully, as a result of today's um, Dimcast, uh, we will get people talking about that. Um, Tom Greenwood, thank you so much um, for uh, joining us today, and uh, I look forward to working with you again in, in the future. Great, my pleasure.